Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 4 and continuing with the next topic which is 4.5 Performance Efficiency Testing or in simple terms also known as Performance Testing. This tutorial will be divided into two parts as it has a lot of information to be discussed so I don't want to make it a quite longer video so thought of breaking that into two parts so this is the part one of performance efficiency testing. To begin with when you talk about the performance testing or performance efficiency testing first of all we should understand what are the various types of performance testing. We namely know them from the basic understanding that we have load testing, stress testing, volume testing, soak testing and uh, spike testing as well. But as per the syllabus is concerned, they only talk about three things that is load, stress and scalability. Where scalability covers the volume and soak and spike is not discussed as it is optional. It is only applicable to specific applications which involve spike. But yes, I'll be giving you a quick introduction to all of them. Load testing is generally uh, when you test an application with the desired number of users what the customer would have requested you to work on. So for example, if an application has to work simultaneously for 100 users, then you try with 100 users and test the application in different scenarios, you call it as load testing and you make sure that the response time as defined is being expected and uh, the same for the all other resources for the performance parameters is meeting the expectation or not. Whereas when you talk about the stress, uh, stress testing, which is obviously putting and applying stress beyond the load. So load is something which you can handle. Stress is something like your peak. So when you talk about stress testing, it is obviously going beyond the limits defined by the expectations or requirements. So assume that the same application which says that the customer requirement is around 100 application, 100 users at a time, then probably you try to go beyond that and try with 120 users or 150 users and see that where exactly the application crashes. Why would you like to go beyond the expectation or beyond the requirements when 100 is working fine? Probably then, then, then you go for stress testing, but what is the need of that? It's just to find out the bottlenecks and the peaks what the application can actually handle again that's fine but why would you be interested in that when the customer is not what if your application fails or crashes at 101 expectation is for 100 users but your application is crashing at 101 then it's very close to the expected limit by the customer so you would like to make sure that this limit the crash limit is not very close to the uh, expected requirement limit so you try to push that bottleneck or peak to different point further, uh, probably like 125, 130, 150, and then tell the customer that it's going to work fine for 100. So you just keep some safe limit between the load limit and the break point. So that's where stress testing acts a lot helpful to determine some of the key parameters for simple performance testing. The next thing is a scalability testing, which is generally to meet the expectations of the future efficiency. So probably your customer might look forward to have a further upgradation in future. And today he or she, you know the customer may have only a hundred users to be used or predicted. But what if the customer say to you that tomorrow, maybe after down the line one year or two year, I may look forward to have more number of users on this application. So you have to test an application for the ability to have a further scaling up. So, you know, you can scale up. Scale is a very common word which makes you allow you to move that product in a bigger way or higher way. So any pattern, but yes, that allows you to move further and beyond the expectation. So you will check the product in order to make sure that if it is ability, the ability of the product is to accept further loads or not. And if it can be further upgraded if required in later point of time or not. So that's what is scalability testing is all about. The next part of it is talking about the performance test planning. Of course, the planning plays a vital role in order to conduct efficient performance testing. So first of all, we will like to say that the basic 
uh, performance plan remains the same which is to make sure that when it will happen how it will happen or uh, what kind of people do you have do you have a team for it or not will you be outsourcing it do you have the enough infrastructure for that or you have a budget allocated for that or not what kind of budget do you have can you procure a team internally or you have to go outsource so you know everything has to be considered as a part of the planning itself when it comes to determining what should be performed as a part of performance testing so just like any other non-functional levels you will have a generic planning phase for performance as well but additionally there are specific constraints which we should target and understand in order to deliver the right thing at the right point of time. The very first thing, can, thing comes uh, is the test environment which you'll be using. So whether the test environment is available or not, whether you can configure it or not, and will that be able to conduct effective test, performance test or not. Because you may have a different environment which you might be using for unit integration and system which is functional levels. But when it comes to performance, you probably make use of production-like environment or probably the production environment itself because production gives you a real-time standards for any kind of executions and make sure that this is how it will exactly behave when we put a load of 100 users with this particular execution or transaction scenario. The second is obviously the uh, performance efficiency is required to be tested as early as possible in the life cycle. Where we say that, generally people know that non-functional testing happens post-system testing because you need the entire product to be there with you in order to conduct performance testing. But did you know that, you know, so a lot of factors of performance can start right from the unit testing in fact. Now, when you generally talk about unit testing, unit testing allows you to conduct the basic program test in order to check for memory leaks or releasing the, uh, killing the unwanted variables at certain point of time when it will not be any further required. So yes, when you talk about such critical things and basic things, you don't really have to wait for system testing to happen. Though you have a big program and big scenario to execute, which is post system testing, but a lot of minor things can actually begin right from unit followed by integration and system testing to check for those things and then move into the final practical execution in the production environment. Additionally, a code review can also be helpful to understand a lot of uh, analysis and help you to determine any kind of standards, coding issues or vulnerabilities, a lot of such factors which will be helpful to determine the performance efficiency much earlier during the static testing as well, itself. So if you have a provision to uh, involve your performance uh, requirements during the code review phase, make sure that you have planned for it. The hardware, software and network bandwidth needed for performance testing is expected very well to be available at the point of conducting the performance testing. You know, these kind of factors play a very vital role that what kind of configuration you have, uh, what kind of environment you have set up, then what kind of, uh, you know, network you have. Because the network, if it is poor, you might think that it is the performance, which is uh, the application, which is not responding, but probably it will be due to the network connections, what you have. So performance deals with a lot of such parameters, and this is really important to be taken care when it comes to performance testing. Additionally, when you talk about generating the required load for performance efficiency, test may have a significant influence on the hardware and tool acquisition cost. What kind of licenses do you have? Like what kind of uh, tool you have procured? So does the tool allow you to have enough uh, number of virtual users in order to apply that load which you have to test for? Because not all the tool comes with that capability of performing and applying specific load what you can actually look forward to. And at the same time, responding you with the desired number of parameters as a part of report result. So there's a lot of things which you need to take care of during the planning itself so that you have an effective plan in order to execute things later in the life cycle and also determine what will happen at what point of time. The cost of generating the load for performance efficiency test may be minimized by renting the required test infrastructure. 
you might think that you know not always you can host a internal infrastructure for such heavy testing when you talk about performance testing it requires a lot of infrastructure and equipments in order to perform within your organization and most of the time it has been observed that such high ended uh, performance testing kind of thing is generally outsourced because a particular organization would have already invested to set up the infrastructure and all you need to do is pay them a minimal cost in order to do that for you so instead of you again procuring that just for a particular project might invite a very heavy cost which might not be uh, sufficient as per your budget as well and probably you might be working on the next so you don't want to do that and probably you may not get the desired output as well because you may not have the right set of people doing the performance testing for you so sometimes you call the experts you call the specialized people and team to do that job for you and could be very much cheaper compared to hosting one of yours care should be taken at the test planning stage to ensure that performance tools to be used provides the required compatibility with the communication protocols used by the system under test another important thing when it comes to performance testing is to look for the protocols of the system which you are trying to test so generally we get a lot of protocols which are supported by global performance testing tools but uh, what is that your application wants so if your application is built on flex citrix sibyl sap what kind of platform does it has what kind of protocols does it use and those protocols must be supported by your tool which you are using so you must evaluate or you know review your tool before you make use of it so probably like a pilot project you would have done earlier or you would have conducted a poc right now in order to make sure that these protocols are supported by the tool defects relating to the performance testing often have significant impact on the system under test so yes of course the defects which are related to performance testing has a key area which is the core functional code which plays a vital role in order to improvise the functional parameters in order to return the non functional efficiency so thus we need to identify that defects are related to which part of it and you know review them or include them right at early phase so that the performance testing is uh, done with minimum efforts and uh, minimum resolutions so it, it, it just just like you know performance testing is not all about fixing a defect it's about fine tuning the system upgrading it further making it better and better so it's just that your performance depends on lot of such basic things which you would have done earlier in the life cycle and taking care of that is really important to make sure that these kind of things are not going to act as a broad block for us on the way so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and answer them well we'll be getting back to you with another part of it that is part 2 of performance testing in the next tutorial stay tuned for that till then keep learning keep exploring and keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning